Wayne Bell retired from the Manchester Select Board after serving for 20 years this past November. He was first elected to the board in 2000 and served as vice chair. He has also served as a justice of the peace since 1982, adjudicating tax and appraisal disputes and performing efficient and master of ceremony duties as a justice or as an ordained interfaith minister and Celtic priest. Wayne sits on court diversion panels for the Bennington County Center for Restorative Justice. He was the Vermont Humanities Council's Educator of the Year in 2013. He has taught graduate courses for teacher certification through Castleton University and the Vermont Higher Education Collaborative, and also taught English at Mount Anthony Union Middle School in Bennington. Wayne was a well-known Manchester restaurateur for many years, operating Ye Old Tavern in the early 1980s and the Quality Restaurant on Main Street for over 16 years. We sat down recently for a brief conversation about his long service on the Manchester Select Board. Wayne, first off, I want to say thank you for 20 years of service on the Select Board, and congratulations on your retirement. Thank you, Mark. I'm curious, what drew you to serve in the first place? Uh, on the Select Board? Yes. Uh, that's, a, that's a longer story. I guess it started, uh, it might have started long before that, um, just probably close to 40 years ago. Um, I had come here and I had a business, Ye Old Tavern, and I had joined the Rotary Club. And um, we used to meet up at the Equinox Hotel and we were having dinner there one night. And um, there was a meeting going on across the street in the courthouse. And uh, in the midst of that, uh, Dr. Clifford Harwood came over mm -hmm. and uh, found me and asked if I wanted to be a justice of the peace. And I had no idea what that meant, but uh, I did know that Dr. Harwood was, uh, this community was extraordinarily indebted to Dr. Harwood. Uh, half of the people here, I think, were delivered by him and were cared for by him, whether for money or eggs or anything else. He was an extraordinary uh, part of this community. So, of course, I said yes. And, and so I began serving as a justice of the peace. And then um, fast forward to uh, 2000, I got a call and uh, a couple of local people uh, said that they wanted to uh, have a talk with me and they wanted to meet at Mulligan's. Uh, they had that little room and a separate table and I had no idea what this was about. Uh, but as it turned out, they were asking if um, I would be interested in serving on the select board. Joe Miles, um, I think due to personal and business obligations, had been our selectman, and he was uh, forced to cut his term short, and so the select board needed a candidate to appoint. And so they uh, solicited me, and then I really had to think about that. Uh, and. Uh, so I said yes to that, and uh, here we are 20 years later. Um, and uh, that's, how it, that's how it started, sort of by accident. And I was involved in uh, a number of other things in the community. I was active in the chamber and, and other organizations. But that's how I, that was my foray into uh, town government. It's not a sudden departure by any means, but uh, why leave now? Well, you know, we've been having an ongoing conversation uh, on the select board over the last couple of years. And um, part of our job is to look toward the future and figure out you know, what's gonna serve our town well. And uh, one of the things about having uh, long serving uh, members uh, is uh, we're a five person board and uh, that doesn't always leave room for uh, younger voices on the board. Now, we haven't had anybody tripping over themselves to step up for this, so yeah. it hasn't been an issue in that regard. But uh, I, as the oldest member of the board, and uh, probably Ivan Beatty right behind me, I had served 20 years. Ivan's, uh, oh, more than probably more than 35, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, we've been saying somehow we have to get the next generation on board. When we started, uh, you know, we were young, we had young families, and we had a lot to do, but, but we stepped up, and we have found that that's a lot more difficult now. And so this was an ongoing conversation. And so after 20 years, I looked at it, I said, you know, this isn't going to just happen, so I almost need to force the issue. 
I would have been happy to continue serving and, uh, you know, till they dragged me out with my boots on. But um, I also felt it might be more responsible to mm -hmm. to really kind of force the issue and, and help get a younger member on the board. So I'm very happy that uh, the board found a great candidate in Heidi Chamberlain and uh, convinced her to uh, be appointed and fill out my term until town meeting. Now, I want to just ask you a couple of broad questions, uh, just based, you know, just sort of glean some of your wisdom right, from, <laughs> from your massive experience in this, in this town. <laughs> I mean, as a 40 year resident of Manchester with 20 years on the select board, how would you describe the town's evolution? Well, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I've been thinking about that lately. Uh, it's funny, when I first came here, the town looked uh, quite different. Uh, if you looked around, just even starting from the center of the downtown, um, of course, we had our infamous intersection. And, uh, you know, that, that became a little bit of an issue, mostly around foliage uh, when things were busy. Mm -hmm. um, but that was always a popular item for criticism. Mm -hmm. As you looked around that corner, this was before um, Ben Haubin came and redeveloped that corner. So Trethaway's hardware store was there, and it was... a uh, it was a kind of a rundown, almost tenement looking building and was on its last legs. Um, across the street, where we now have the Factory Point Town Green, a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, asset for our town, was uh, the Ford Garage. And, you know, that was, uh, you know, it was a, a good business, but it was not, not something that you would invite, that would be inviting for people right. uh, visiting Manchester. Um, as you went up the street, eventually, of course, uh, a couple of years after I was here, I bought the Quality Restaurant. That was on its last legs. The uh, the family that owned it uh, when I came here was uh, had kind of lost interest. They were only open a couple of days a week, and then they sold it to some German fellows who uh, had an idea that it would be an interesting Hofbrau house kind of thing but they got themselves in all kinds of trouble and eventually got arrested so um you know a lot of the businesses were were struggling and this was before um we kind of uh, saw the in, what was termed then an invasion of the factory outlet stores and so the factory outlet stores um certainly brought a lot of people here. A lot of people were interested in that idea of mm -hmm. shopping, but uh, they also allowed and, and either renovated or, or reconstructed or, or built um, a number of beautiful buildings. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the downside of that in a way was uh, the town, we got so nervous about this invasion of, of uh, out factory outlets, uh, thinking that that wasn't really in keeping with the character of Manchester, although uh, Manchester, originally called Factory Point, was has always been a trading center. It's a it's the crossroads of two north south routes, and from the times that there were um, they were lumbering these hills surrounding us, it's always been a, a mill town, kind of in a trading center, and it's always sort of been a factory outlet town. Uh, but that was that one. Um, the the planning board uh, responded with. Uh, a thought that if they limited um, retail businesses to 1,500 square feet, they would be able to discourage large um, outlet national companies from coming in. Well, that didn't happen. They, they just adapted and they came in and they took the 1,500 feet. And then what we ended up with was a whole inventory as that uh, part of our commerce faded out. We had a whole bunch of 1,500 square foot properties. We didn't have... Uh, the normal diversity with some large spaces and small spaces. So that's something that we needed to recuperate from afterwards. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, as I think about what the town looked like then, and then there was that evolution. And now, um, in the midst of this COVID, uh, still pretty exciting. Uh, one thing about Manchester, it always reinvents itself. Mm. Um, it's changed kind of in waves a number of times since I've been here. But right now I'm thrilled to see um, new restaurants and restaurants uh, moving around. The uh, Silver 
fork has moved into the abandoned library building in the village and yep. uh, Dina has opened a bakery in the former Silver Fork property and there's a, um, a business moving into the country store on Main Street. And so uh, that's what happens here. Yep. Um, things kind of ebb and flow, but Manchester has uh, always been really amazing about uh, reinventing itself and staying healthy. And of course, now with, uh, with COVID, we have a new influx. Uh, we're, we've kind of grown quite a bit. Um, we have, uh, I would say we're probably pushing uh, 5,000 now. We have, we've always been a, a town of about 4,000, but we've had a lot of people decide that, uh, you know, maybe they had a second home or maybe they come, came up and bought or maybe they're renting. So we have a town that's kind of fully occupied now, primarily because of COVID, but also people have discovered that they're able to work remotely. Um, and so that, that impact of a, of, a, of a growing town on our schools and everything else is also a, a factor now. But overall, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very happy with uh, how this town is developed. And yeah. um, and the select board um, is always cognizant of that and, and trying to um, protect uh, the parts of the town that can be at risk with, uh, with change, but also being proactive and anticipating uh, what the town may need in the future. And so that's a lot of what drives our discussions at the select board. What were some of the most challenging issues you faced on the board? You know, I was uh, trying to think about that. I mean, there were long-term things. You know, uh, I mentioned uh, our interesting intersection uh, yes. at Center Bridge, I prefer to call it. Uh, uh -huh. Some people know it by another nickname, but uh, that was an interesting uh, discussion and an interesting project. Mm -hmm. And uh, our town, it's a funny town. We're a town that often doesn't have a consensus. Um, I used to joke that if you put anything up for a vote, the vote was always going to be something like 51-49. Uh, and it didn't matter. It could be either way. Uh, and the roundabout was, uh, you know, a lot of people said, well, that's, you know, that's just great the way it is. You know, we don't care. That keeps things under control. You know, the roundabout's fine. Don't do anything. And other people were, oh, it's terrible. This is the end of civilization. I had to wait 10 minutes to get through the intersection. Um, so they started that project and they looked through all these plans and had dozens and dozens of hearings and, and town meetings. That process went on for close to 20 years before the culmination of the roundabout. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a frustration that something like that had to take that long. Yeah. Um, and, and it was also a frustration where as it really formed up mm -hmm. through with lots of town participation, there were always uh, actors that entered at, you know, 1158 for the 12 o'clock uh, thing and said, you know, what, you know, tell me about, the, you know, who yeah. hadn't even paid attention, although, and then suddenly, yep, you know, we're, we're being very again. vociferous in either, you know, mostly in, in opposition. But it finally got done, and I have to say that um, hats off to the critics that I was aware of, almost without exception, uh, after it was uh, created, said, you know, this is really great, and I'm, we were wrong. So, um, that, that must almost be. without exception, uh, yeah. people uh, accepted and changed their opinion. And I think it's just mm -hmm. spectacularly beautiful. Uh, you know, right now, the infrastructure in this town between the town green and the, uh, the roundabout and the, the recreation area, the new fields, mm -hmm. uh, the park house, yeah. the partnership with Burn Burton for the, uh, the new track. Yeah. Uh, you, you drive around this town and people that come here, are, they're astounded. How does a, a little town of, you know, 4,000 plus people manage this? Uh, be, well, part of it's because yeah. on any given weekend in this little bowl of towns, we have probably 10,000 visitors. Yeah. But um, that's given us uh, some great assets and, uh, yeah. and it's created a beautiful little town. So we're, we're very lucky uh, in the... 
yeah, you know, in the scheme of things. Right. If a distinction can be made, I don't know if, if you're in a position to, to speculate on this, but how does the supervision of Manchester differ from other towns in Vermont? Sure. Um, we're a, a five person select board, you know, and this is a kind of important almost to discuss because I, I mentioned that there are a lot of new people in town and I see this on social media, people asking questions and, you know, who does, you know, why don't they pick up our guard? You know, there's all these things that are, are specific to Vermont or small towns in Vermont that aren't the same as other places. And yeah. so people uh, should understand what their local government looks like. Um, we're a five person select board for a relatively small town. I mean, there are many towns much smaller. Uh, mm -hmm. And that allowance is governed by state statute. Smaller towns than us uh, may have a three member select board. In those cases, those towns mostly don't have much infrastructure. The select board actually is the um, Department of Public Works. They're pretty much a road crew, a road department. Mm -hmm. um, in our town, our town's kind of interesting, although our population isn't big. Uh, say compared to Bennington, who, you know, may have about three times the population that we have. Mm -hmm. But but we do have larger town issues because we do get so many visitors. You know, we may, we may only have 4,000 or so residents, but when we're, when all our beds are full and all our motels and everything, we have a lot of people. And mm -hmm. so we have those issues. So we have a police department, which most towns don't have. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course we have an extraordinary uh, fire department and, and, uh, and rescue squad, um, the rescue squad private, but the fire department part of the town. Um, and so uh, our governance uh, deals with uh, many, many issues uh, connected to that. And we have a, a fairly substantial budget. Uh, you know, we have to allocate about $6 million a year for different aspects that you wouldn't find in, in normally in a town of this size if it wasn't a hub uh, for tourism. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with, with the, the benefits of that, you know, come the responsibility of, uh, you know, maintaining the infrastructure, uh, keeping uh, the upkeep of the town uh, physically, mm -hmm. uh, but also the safety of the visitors and, uh, yeah. you know, the, the maintenance of the roads and things that uh, wouldn't be as big an issue in a town, say, like Landgrove or Peru or somewhere like that. Right. Now, dwindling attendance to the select board in town meetings has been a concern throughout the state. <laughs> um, are you satisfied that the public, uh, that the community is participating enough by other means? <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never been. And that was long before we were, we were televised. Uh, I had hoped uh, when we were first televised that uh, people would... Uh, tune in and they might be sitting at home and they'd hear an issue come up and they'd jump in their car and come down to the meeting and then stand up and tell us what they thought. Yeah. Um, we don't see so much of that. And of course, now for the last year, we've been on Zoom. So, yeah. you know, that makes it uh, probably even more challenging for most people. Although uh, a lot of people regularly communicate with their select board uh, the old fashioned way by telephone. I get uh, still get regular telephone calls from people with questions or concerns about things yeah. that may or may not be under the auspices of town government. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, we dedicated one of the town report covers to uh, uh, essentially to citizenship. We had a picture of Sylvia Jolivet on and Sylvia, uh, retired school teacher from Manchester, is one of our, our most regular uh, select board meeting attendees from the public. Yeah. And uh, the wonderful thing about her uh, is that she really takes that citizenship, that idea very seriously. And she, she pays attention to the issues and follows our agenda and asks questions and clarifies things. And, mm -hmm. and that's a really wonderful participation. Mm -hmm. And I wish that more people did that. Um, you know, I, I talk to people and many people watch and sort of pay attention and, and kind of stay out of the fray and, and have said, you know, we trust you. We voted for you. We're happy with the job you're doing. Uh, right. If that changes, we'll let you know. So a lot of people look at it like that. But I also uh, uh, wish that there was more attention uh, in the way that that Sylvia uh, 
was able to participate. Of course, it, it's much more challenging now. The other piece of that is, uh, you know, I've talked about this current generation not really stepping up for service. And I wish that um, the schools could incorporate into the curriculum uh, civics once again. It used to be um, part of that. But, you know, most uh, adults now even couldn't really explain to you how uh, town government works. And certainly the kids, uh, yeah. there's not much information about that in school. So I wish that was... Yeah. Um, both on a, on a local level and a state level and a, and a federal level. I wish there was um, the teaching of yeah. a citizen's obligations uh, became part of the curriculum because it's, it's important. What advice do you have for succeeding board members? That's a, a good question. Um, you know, one of the, uh, the reasons that, I, another reason that I left exactly when I did was we had just begun mm -hmm. uh, the budget process. And a big part of our job is to figure that out. This year, mm -hmm. um, more challenging than ever with, uh, with COVID and, and mm -hmm. shifting uh, resources for uh, income for the town and things like that. So uh, a sharp pencil uh, this year is going to be very important. Um, a lot of uh, property owners that pay taxes here are, are, uh, you know, maybe landlords and suffering from people who are not able to keep that whole income stream going. And so we have to be very resourceful in, in mm -hmm. helping people through that and getting it till we get back on our feet economically. So uh, I felt it was important to get somebody on board, not necessarily right at election time, but before that, so that, uh, uh, they could understand the uh, municipal budget process, which is uh, a pretty complicated thing. We're uh, absolutely blessed um, with um, a wonderful town staff. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm answering these questions as one now retired selectman, but uh, the select board working together, uh, particularly uh, the chair, Ivan Beatty and, and uh, the members and the town manager, John O'Keefe. Uh, John O'Keefe has been an extraordinary asset as a professional manager who, um, you know, rolls up his sleeves, does every job in the town, whether it's jumping down in the ditch or or figuring out uh, the uh, the nuance of uh, Financing and where we, where the town can uh, best spend their energy and their money and and how to solve a lot of these problems and he's just been an extraordinary asset to our town and most people have no idea of the broad scope of his work uh, you know they may intersect with him on a you know an issue here or there uh, but he has uh, been one of the most powerful things I've served with. Uh, probably a dozen different selectmen and three or four town managers. And um, I have to say uh, the job that uh, the current board has been doing and the job that our town manager and his staff uh, at town hall and, uh, and around the town, the Department of Public Works and Public Safety um, is, is the best it's ever been. Very, uh, I'm very proud of that. And, and, Manchester residents should be proud of that too. Right. Um, and how does the history of Manchester? Let me finish that. Yeah, yeah, please, you you please asked do. about what what my advice would be, sure. and that's uh, you know, a lot of people when they're new here, they have assumptions uh, maybe based on from where they came. But uh, when you arrive here, it's not a bad idea to sit and listen for a while and uh, you can learn a lot about this town and talk to the people who have grown up here who have lived here for generations and there's a lot of wisdom here mm -hmm. um, i was blessed with resources when i came here that taught me so much about this town uh, my neighbor down the street d kilburn i used to sit with him every week and any question i had between d or his wife uh, any question I had about the history of this town or how this came to be or who was there, uh, that, was, that was really important and it gave me a, a wonderful understanding of the uh, traditions and the, and the history of, uh, of this place. And so I would tell uh, people as they 
step up to get involved, to, uh, to spend some time listening and learning the history uh, and uh, embrace that as they uh, work and make decisions that will affect Manchester's future. I am tempted to ask you about the relationship between the town manager and the select board and how that works. Sure. The, uh, the select board essentially, um, the chairman and I was, I've served as the vice chairman for, I don't know how long, seemed like forever. <laughs> um, but essentially they're elected internally within the board. When the board reconstitutes every election day, we, we uh, nominate a chair and nominate a, a vice chair and then uh, three members. And... Uh, Essentially, the town manager in, in our forum is, uh, he's our action piece. So uh, the buck stops at the select board. Uh, a lot of people uh, are, that are unhappy with the decision, uh, it's very popular to vent at the town manager, but I often correct them and say, you need to vent at the select board. And I said, the town manager, for the most part, except for issues under a state statute, is acting at the behest of the select board, whatever he's doing that may or may, may be popular or unpopular is at mm. our behest. And mm. so if you have a complaint or you're angry and you're not satisfied, uh, the select board is, is, the, uh, is the place. So, you know, round up one of your selectmen or attend mm. a meeting on these days on Zoom or, or write a letter or send an email and, and vent to the select board. Uh, so. Um, you know, we give general direction. The extraordinary thing about our manager is uh, he has been very excellent in guiding us uh, to address things that we may not have thought of proactively. Mm -hmm. um, the Emergency Management and Operations Center, when we've had uh, different crises, is, is activated and, and it's uh, very well organized. It's a model in the state. And that was all uh, driven and organized uh, by the manager under, uh, you know, our authority, but certainly uh, with his uh, mm -hmm. his professional knowledge and his professional wisdom. So that's that's one example. But even as you look uh, around the town, a lot of uh, the improvements uh, that were made. Look at the uh, street lights through our downtown and things like that. These are things that. Um, you know, John looked around and said, this looks fairly awful. Let's uh, let's take a look at what we could do. And yeah, we all looked at different possibilities and models and costs and things. But mm -hmm. uh, without that, uh, without that energy, mm -hmm. um, we would not uh, be half of what we are today. So mm -hmm. that relationship, uh, essentially, he is the uh, he uh, enable. Well, he acts out what what we direct, but we are also, uh, we rely on him uh, to tell us what we should be reacting to and what we should be addressing. So it's a compatible relationship. Yes. Yes. Symbiotic I, relationship. <laughs> right. Very good. Anything else? Um, it's been an honor to serve and uh, I, uh, Wish uh, the newest select person, Heidi Chamberlain, well. I know she'll do a good job. She's got a mm -hmm. great uh, financial head, and that'll be very important going forward. And uh, I would encourage uh, new, especially younger folks that want to get involved to uh, find ways to do that. We have a lot of boards that... Uh, uh, Right now, we're a little bit hamstrung, but as things loosen up and, and people start getting active, probably in the spring, uh, there will be lots of opportunities for volunteerism. And uh, that's always been a big thing here. We are a town that's extraordinarily generous and many people who volunteer quietly and, mm -hmm. uh, and make this a, a very special place to live. You know, Tara and I have been, uh, you know, we have a wonderful family and life here and we've been honored to raise our kids here although they are also kids who've left the state but um, you know this is uh, I can't imagine uh, ever leaving here I see friends of mine migrating to warmer climes but as I sit here on my frosty deck uh, I'll be here for the duration thank you so much Wayne all right you're very welcome okay. Mark. thanks for uh, yeah the interview